Hello everybody and it is finally time to make my tier list and welcome to the channel so yeah I've been playing this game almost non-stop for the channel I've been streaming it if you haven't caught my streams I played a lot on there trying to max out characters and stuff with the new soul map um, and I feel like the, the way we got to think about all these characters is like all of them can clear all the stages we all know this it's a Muso game right um, I think it just really depends on how the character feels respectively to each of them and i have you know you know things to say about certain characters that may fluctuate between you know higher tiers or lower tiers but above all else i feel like what's important in a muso game is how powerful and how much damage you deal to like an area to an opponent whatever right so i am going to be thinking about these characters you know with skills involved because i feel like if you're playing the game you're going to play them with skills unless you're doing a specific challenge so Things like, especially at the new soul map, shake things up a lot because it added some pretty overpowered skills like Rage of Lion, Shatter, Worked Up, and stuff like that, Heat Up. All those skills add to each of these characters because characters that are probably a little bit weaker when you think about, like, maybe, I don't know, where is he? Where's Chopper? You got a character like Chopper who's historically really bad. Um, with the new skills, he's actually, like, not f tier anymore but we'll talk about him and maybe we'll see if he's still in f tier and get more in depth but i'm just giving an example of like characters like even hybrid kaido people are saying that he's worse than you know power kaido because of his damage the skills in the game at least like make him stronger but like keep him at least up to par with everything in the game so in general i feel like it's important to think about skills when it comes to the tier list so i'm i am gonna like think about that because i would i would assume most of you are running these characters with their optimal builds right with these skills you know whether it's sovereign strength for all the conquerors hockey users and stuff like that or you know the new skills that the sum i provided so regardless though there's a lot of characters to go through i played a ton i have a ton of footage recorded to you know back up my points or my you know discussions per character hopefully it's not going to take too long so yeah, the parameters are i am talking about skills i'm talking about these characters maxed out right now which is level 24 including both soul maps that are available to the game so obviously in the footage you're gonna see the all of these characters probably curve stomping because these characters are way above the level of like you know stages in the game that's what i'm saying even a character like chopper can destroy a lot of stages because they're they're just that much stronger now with the soul map stuff which is another point which is to say i hope we get other stages that, you know, can compensate for that because if every stage is just going to be maxed out at 18 or 20, these characters are all way too strong, no matter what tier they're in. But okay, so let's start it off from the bottom. We're going to talk about Zoro, but obviously we're going to go from both of them since they're right next to each other. pre time skip Zoro, I feel like, is slightly weaker than post time skip Zoro. Um, and both of them, I feel like, are probably comfortable in, like, the B tier. Um, I'm gonna put them in order like in terms of like where you know where they belong. I feel like post time skip Zoro is stronger than pre time skip just because like I feel like his combo system or like the combo strings that he has in the game are particularly strong. He also has a you know access to all the post time skip like special attacks. He does a decent amount of damage. All his attacks you can do in the air, like most of his special attacks you can do in the air, which is you know it's kind of corner corner to someone right here. Um, it's kind of crazy how much Zoro could do in the air, but um, yeah, Zoro can do a lot in the air. He has air combo game. He has good damage. He has some pretty good special attacks. So if you want to build him special attack enhancements and stuff like that, I wouldn't you know mind that. But the reason, like I said, I have him above pre time skip for me personally. I just you know I think even if you want to incorporate design and everything, but I think his special attacks like the Tri Achilleo Cosm and all that stuff, the crossing the sixth path, the you know the purgatory onigiri all that stuff i think is just better than for pre time skip but i feel like they're kind of inner you know they're both kind of on the same tier because they're very similar in terms of like you know combos and everything moving on to yonji i feel like yonji to me i'm not i i like the the sanji siblings but i feel like like the i, I feel like yonji might be in the better tiers like niji is pretty good i get they're all good um i just think sky types are kind of interesting right to use but i feel like yonji himself compared to the other brothers he has like more range because of his hand like detaching um he also has like some vacuum attacks like tornado attacks where he can you know suck in characters he also has attacks where he can 
make like tornadoes and you know send it forward so yonji does have that over say like niji and ichiji um so i think that's pretty good i think it probably makes him a bit better than them i feel like all of them are like a tier i'm just gonna grab them all and then talk about them where are they reiju is is better than i think than him whereas ichiji there he is okay Okay, so I would probably order it like this in terms of the Sanji siblings, at least so far. I know I know Judge is there. We'll talk about him in a sec. But I feel like Reiju just has a lot of versatility with the, the poison mechanic, with making herself, like, you know, getting that poison armor. Um, her air combos have a lot, a lot of AoE. She sends out, like, like three tornadoes. The higher your poison, like, level, you know, the more tornadoes and how much more powerful she is. So like she can send out tornadoes and personally I have like she just feels better to use and obviously that's a big you know component when it comes to these warrior games is how good do these characters feel when you play them and for me Rage just feels really good um, to play because she has those tornadoes she has a lot of like you know she, like armor break attacks and stuff like that in the air her you know her sky type you know change is pretty good. And her specials are also pretty good, decent damage, and her overall poison stuff. Even though you might not see too much of an effect on it, of it on it on some like on some characters like you know like you know the, the strong characters like Kaido and stuff like, like you know boss characters, I do think Reiju herself just feels really good, and all her like air combos are just really well done. Then you move on to a character like Yonji. Yonji, like I already explained, I think he's pretty good, so we're just gonna skip him. Um, I think he's probably better than these two, even though Ichiji, in my opinion, he has really good damage and he also has really good flame effects and really good flame power. I feel like Ichiji is not as good as the other two, in my opinion, but I feel like he has this particular combo string in the air where he does the, you know, he does like three fireballs or four fireballs and then he launches like a giant like fire wave afterwards. So. I think Ichiji has a lot going for him. He also, the reason I also bring them here, mine is Reiju. All of, all three of these have, they share special attacks. Like they call each, like they're basically them boys, right? That's how they kind of work. They all have special attacks that call each other in. You know, they all like specific special attacks. They have, they all have the black bug special attack, which has all four, all three of them like do a combo attack. So they're, I feel like it'll be weird of me to like separate them that much, you know, in terms of like where I rank them. But I feel like I'll definitely rank them like in here, like A. Maybe if I'm gonna be honest, I feel like the one I have the least fun with is Niji. So I think I'll bump him down to B tier, in my opinion. I feel like these three are really top tier, while I think Niji himself is, you know, kind of B tier. I feel like he has a lot going for him, but, you know, I feel like how Ichiji, Yonji, and Reiju feel. And the performance that I get from them and like destroying hordes with combos and stuff, I just get that more from these three than I do with Niji. Moving on to Yamato, I think. Oh man, we have. Okay. Moving on to Yamato, I personally think Yamato's S tier. Yamato's obviously rather recent, been only out for about a month now, almost at this point. But Yamato has so much going for him and. Let's talk about Yamato has form change, obviously, which um, turns them into the, you know, the hybrid form. But Yamato's combos have Ice Affliction. They also have the Triangle Button or the, you know, the Unique Attack, whatever, as Massive Guard Break as well. The combos that Yamato does, especially the fourth combo string where uh, he goes forward with the, with the combo or whatever. And that's just like lightning like forward attack so also has lightning attacks ice attacks the not only that yamato has really powerful special attacks and and has arguably the best looking special attack in the game with the divine swiftness i think that special attack looks fantastic so has really good special damage has like other stuff like the narikibura arrow and stuff like that i think is really well done and also has air combos that are really good like yamato has great great stuff then you go into the hybrid version and also has insane like has obviously extends the combo from you know up to five up to i believe seven the combos that you can do with the hybrid form are also insanely powerful it has a ton of range covers a lot of ground and does a, a insane knockback damage so then you have all of that you know incorporating into this character 
and then you also have the freeze you like yamato is pretty broken because you can use the freeze which is just the first combo string the square triangle or the square square triangle where the first one just launches the ice you could basically stun lock them and freeze them and then you could do the the namuji like ice fang like the breath attack that attack does so much damage so you could freeze them do the breath attack and then if they're still frozen because of the breath attack or the other thing you could do another one of your specials or another combo string i think yamato obviously in speed form he like loses the air combos but i think it makes up for it with all the ice stuff even the taunt becomes a counter you can encode yourself in ice and people hit like hit you and they do no damage but they get hurt right so yamato to me is very very top tier like where where in s rank we'll see where he ends up but i think so far for the first person in s i think it's a better a, a great person so going out to whitebeard do i need to really say much about whitebeard i feel like whitebeard is like borderline the pinnacle of the of the game in terms of strength i feel like there are a couple characters we'll get to um that you can argue are better than whitebeard but i feel like whitebeard just has so much for a character that's like, is literally a very simple character he doesn't have air combos um the unique attack the triangle button or the y button whatever you want to use isn't that great it's kind of okay but he has so much damage and range with his uh i forget what the exact weapon is called but he has so much range with that weapon where he literally has a vacuum attack with the second combo string square square triangle you vacuum people up and then you can cancel that into a conqueror's hockey or any special while they're being like shredded by your weapon and then just do a special attack and destroy them and he also demol he's a giant character he demolishes uh you know guard and break you know guard break and all that stuff he just demolishes that like nothing whitebeard is basically like a hot knife through butter he is a demon in this game insane damage and then you go into his full force burst and then he he basically becomes a speed type like like characters like kaido who go into their full force burst or even big mom not their form changes their full force burst where it, you know you could argue they might feel faster but like wiper turns into a straight up linebacker he does so much damage just even dashing so i think Whitebeard can sit comfortably at s rank okay now we got the usups both of them i'm not gonna lie to you i think i think we have usup probably we have time skip usup i think he's like eight here pre time skip is also good but i think i'll probably put him like here because I feel like the the plant mechanic for the post time skip probably works better, at least the way I feel. I think uh, post time skip Usopp works better with the plants and the amount of stuff that the plants do. While this one kind of relies on, you know, pre time skip kind of relies on the fire, you know, the oil and the fire as opposed to planting and then you know sprouting the seeds and all that stuff. Um, they're both really good, but I personally think I th I have you know Usopp up here because i just feel like he does so much obviously he doesn't have air combo game and he has good specials that kind of like make up for also pre time skip boost up so i know they're very similar in their mechanics but i feel like the specials and the overall like power that the plants have is much better than the fire and the oil stuff from the pre time skip stuff right so moving on for that i have uroge in actually let's talk about him first Uroge is like a proponent of these hands. He is master of giving people the fisticuffs. He is just a guy that punches really hard. Um, he has an interesting thing where he form changes into his giant form, but he also does damage while transforming, which is also really good. But I feel like Uroge just does a lot of damage and he's really simple. He doesn't have air combos, so that can you know, probably prop him down a little bit from like you know for his stuff but he does good guard break damage he has really good damage in general so i would probably put uroge like i'll probably put him i probably put him b just because i feel like he like top of b almost a because i feel like he could use more 
because he really is a very simple character. He does have a mechanic, I believe, in the giant form. We'll see how I feel like as we go along with this. Maybe I'll prop him up or not. But right now, I feel like he's a comfortably like in B tier, like high tier, because I feel like he's above mid, but he's not like great, great. But he does really good damage. Um, I feel like he has some really cool specials. Some of them are really good. Uh, I feel like the main thing you want to do with him is his combos. I feel like his combos do more than his special attacks, for in my opinion. It is cool that he can draw like a you know the the symbol on the on the screen with with his weapon. I think that's pretty cool. But I feel like Uroge is you know comfortably in B tier, good damage, good like okay specials. But his form change is what really like I feel like carries him up here. He's pretty slow, but overall I think his form change you know carries him up here. Tashigi. Yeah, I think I think she's here. Um, first character that's really low. I initially thought Tashigi was pretty cool when I first tried her out, and you know made my vid other videos in the past, like you know about a month ago. But I feel like Tashigi over time, and and I in prepping for this video, playing so many of the other characters, and seeing what every like, out like Color Me Shocked, a character that like you know throws stuff from a slingshot or just uses their fists. Is more satisfying to use than Tashigi. I feel like Tashigi's biggest draw is her combos have this. I, I want to say almost like pretentiousness in a way, because Tashigi has a sword style that's very like you know technique based, right? And it's cool. I get. I like her combos, but her triangle or unique thing takes so long to do. Has zero range. Uh, her specials also can, are hit or miss. They don't do a lot of damage. Her combo strings also don't do a lot of damage. And I feel like they take so long because you have to wait for her to also like put her sword back. I feel like Tashigi, for me, has cool looking attacks and stuff like that. But I feel like nothing about it is rewarding. And I feel like it kind of feels bad to do all this stuff and get almost nothing out of it. So for me, I like Tashigi. I think she has like cool looking attacks. And I'm personally probably still player obviously here and there but I, I just personally feel like Tashigi it doesn't live like doesn't really have that much going for her in my opinion which kind of sucks because she's a cool I mean we haven't seen her in a while but she's a cool character so why not smoothie S tier now huh I kind of want I'm putting I'm putting her above Yamato because smoothie has just insane 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 range um her specials are pretty good they do they do break guard pretty well she has the moisture mechanic where obviously she you know ate that fruit so she can make you know suck up moisture and make herself bigger which is obviously her form change but she can also enhance her combos and attacks smoothie is extremely extremely powerful you can even argue maybe she's better than Whitebeard, but I feel like Whitebeard has just more damage. But if you do uh, Smoothie's combo string, or I believe it's the fourth combo string, like four squares and you press triangle, she does this thing where like all these like giant water droplets drop from the sky, and then it, it does so much damage, and then she does a sword attack that has a massive radius, just clearing out every, it's so satisfying. It is so rewarding. And then what, what makes it even crazier is that you have characters that are giant, like Kaido and stuff, and Big Mom, who are big characters, but they don't have no air game, like no air combos. They made Smoothie in her giant form bigger than Whitebeard, and she can do air combos like nobody's business. And all her combos in her giant form are just the big version of her smaller form. So that combo string with the four one just makes the radius and range even bigger than before smoothie is insanely top tier if you don't like if you were thinking or you don't have the dlc pack or anything if this is your first time watching a video like talking about these characters hopefully it's an informative as well as we try to not speed blitz through every single character but smoothie has a lot going for her so if you see her obviously in the first dlc pack she is insanely top tier she is definitely worth getting uh next one is smoker Mm. Where would I put Smoker? <sighs> I feel like Smoker. I feel like he, for me, he's like in the middle. Um, I played him a lot, and he has good specials, good range attacks, especially the sky abilities. Mind you, this is all me. You go to watch someone else's tier list, and they'll probably have other stuff going on. 
but I would probably have Smoker C tier. I think he has good damage and his specials are good, but I feel like his ground combos and his triangle button, they're okay. Um, he also has a uh, special effect with his smoke where he can put smoke on people. I believe it slows them down, but I don't know. It doesn't, like, he doesn't do much for me. I don't like, I don't feel like, I like when I play smoker, I'm not like, whoa, I feel great, but I just feel like he's okay. Like he's good. Um, but he's not like top tier, right? Okay. Shanks, the, the God King himself. I feel like Shanks. It's interesting. I, I feel like I like him more in Pirate Warriors 3, potentially. But in this game, he is really good. I feel like I'll put Shanks here. I think, yeah, I think put Shanks here. Because I know it's like S is getting crowded already. Maybe later I'll put like, you know, when we get towards the end of, and see how the list is looking, we'll, we'll adjust and maybe put the, the God tier status. But I think Shanks comfortably is one of the best in the game. I know at first you can probably think, oh, how so? He's a small character. He doesn't have, you know, he only has one arm, yada, yada, yada. But if you know how to use Shanks, he has a mechanic, obviously, if you're new to the game, where you charge up your sword, essentially. And you, like, after the end of a combo string, you put your weapon down. And then when the next combo that you start, you will have your sword basically coated in Conqueror's Hockey. And what that does is that enhances your attacks and attacks that were like okay before that like had decent you know aoe decent damage are way stronger now and have like one attack that would go down in a single file now goes in three directions explodes one time and then has a third like explode or a second explosion afterwards shanks is really good when you get to like know how he works how he ticks and also if you use the conqueror's hockey special attack it also charges the blade as well so not only does the combo string charge it, it his conqueror's hockey ability also um does it as well so he has really good you know special attacks his unique button is him you know shooting his pistol and stuff which if you have the blade charged with the conqueror's hockey you can also shoot like stronger conqueror's hockey bullets shanks also has very powerful like air combos so shanks is all around like a, a really solid good feeling character and i feel like the the more you get used to like his conqueror's hockey like mechanic the better he is all righty sanji's okay this was interesting most of the time i've been talking about the straw hats how like post time skip is better than pre time skip sanji for me i don't know if, i feel like maybe most people agree um i feel like po uh, pre time skip is actually better than than post time skip like i would probably put pre time skip sanji like here and i'd put post like here like I, I don't know i don't know what it is like when it comes to sky types i feel like sanji's strong he has good he has good combos post time skip sanji has good combos good air combos and stuff but i feel like his air combos are really unintuitive i feel like when you're comboing people, he always hits upwards. And I know most of the time with the hitbox in the game, like you're bringing people up with you anyway, but it's always finicky with sky types. And the fact that his kicks go a lot of the time upwards, depending on the combo string is kind of annoying, but he does have very powerful stuff. But the problem with him, which is what I mentioned with Zoro, Zoro is like weird. He is a power type that he can do I can do, I think, three of his most powerful ultimates, which is the Crossing the Six Paths, the Triculiacosm, and the uh, Purgatory Onigiri. I can do all of those special attacks in the air. If you put all of Sanji's, like, Diablo, like, Diablo Jambe stuff, he can only do, I think, one of those special attacks in the air. He can obviously do other skills. I'm talking about, like, the ultimates. So he can only do, like, one of the ultimates in the sky, which is, like, why like why is he a sky type then if he can if he can't even do most of his like most powerful attacks in the sky so it's, it's kind of weird um so that's why i put him like mid tier like he, he's okay he's not bad he's not trash but he definitely leaves a lot to be desired um and then you go to pre time skip and you get all you get all access to all of your special attacks because he's a you know he's a speed type i believe when you do the diablo jambe stuff and pre time skip sanji is good you can make a, a on land specific um build for him 
like you know ground attacks and he'll work out really well because he'll have the buff of the Diablo Jambe stuff he'll have all his special attacks that he can do everything with pre time skill Sanji is just better than post time skip Sanji which sucks obviously because obviously most people are like oh I want to play the new shiny post time skip one right but no yeah I, I personally think that like pre time skip Sanji is just better okay so now moving on to Sabo Man, Sabo's weird. And I, what I mean by weird is that I don't think Sabo is, like, trash or great. I just feel like he... Okay, the thing with Sabo is that he's a Logia, so he has unlimited frames, right? And I feel like most of his combos always end with him grabbing, like, a single enemy and then doing, like, a, like you know, the, the his dragon techniques, right? He has one combo string, which is, I think, the third combo string where he does, like, a fire cross and launches it forward and that's a good like dan like you know enemy clear but aside from that like his air combos are pretty good it it's funny because obviously we i don't know if i want to talk about ace right now but it's like you you think about like sabo and you immediately think about how ace is built and sabo is more it's weird it feels like sabo has a build that's not centered around like his fire stuff except for the sky stuff maybe but, you know, I, overall, Sabo is still cool. Um, he has some cool special attacks. I really like, I mean, I just personally like the way he's, the voice actor says, like, you know, you know Ibuki, like, whatever. But I think if I'm going to be, like, objective, like, he's, he's, like, a little bit less than mid. He's, like, he's, he's, like, he's, like bad. Like, not, like, not the worst or whatever. Like, C is obviously, like, mid, right? D is, like, bad. E is, like, really bad. F is, like, trash tier. D is, like, bad, but, like, he still has some, you know, redeeming qualities about him. So, he's not, like, you know, as bad as Toshigi. But, I don't know. Sabo, I feel like he's a weird case. Like I said, he still gets buffs because he turns uh, invulnerable with the Logia stuff. But, I don't know. Sabo's a weird, weird case. But, I feel like he, he would comfortably sit, like, in D tier for me. Nico Robin. Hmm. Robin is interesting. I feel like... Robin for me feels like two he she feels like two different characters. She feels really good, but then she also feels like okay. Like I feel like if I'm gonna put Robin probably C. Like above eh, probably eh, mm, I think here would probably be like my, where I would put Robin. Cause like Robin has like, a cool gimmick where she can spawn a, another version of herself and that version can copy your your combos and stuff. And she also has really good chip damage with her like ability like you know her actual combos because she spawns so many hands and stuff that like she actually destroys guard pretty pretty effectively i think just her damage and her specials actually when i keep thinking about it i might actually have her like here comfortably um maybe even like right here yeah i think i think here i must say maybe later i'll change but i think here is where i have her because her specials are also really good she has good range they have they good they do good damage and stuff so I do think Robin is a really good character, destroys guard pretty well, and does some pretty decent damage. If you do certain combos in a, in a way, um, you can also like team up with your other half and do some insane damage and chip. So I think I think Robin's like actually pretty good. Probably slept on in the community. Obviously, if you're a Robin fan, that's different. But Okiku, Okiku is like I don't. It's funny. Okiku. I mean, I, f I feel better using her than I do with Shanks. I feel like Okiku has a lot. It's very similar to Yamato, which is why they're right next to each other. Um, Yamato just has more power. But Okiku has really good specials. She has... It's funny. When I talked about Toshigi earlier, Toshigi had an issue where like her combos would take forever because she wants to be kind of like, you know, very swordsman technique-esque. Okiku is very similar in that regard, but Okiku just has way, way more damage has a lot of cool guard breaks, is a speed type, and her form change is really cool with the mask and everything. But not only that, like, the she can do, like, tornadoes. She has ice affliction, so she can freeze enemies. She has vacuum attacks. Like, her specials are also both really strong, one of them being an ice-based one that does, like, damage as the, you know, as it keeps going. And one of them being, like, one of those traditional, like, very big slash attacks and then, you know, finish off with putting it in the, you know, in the sheath or whatever. But Okiku's really powerful. Like, really, really strong. 
um one of the top tiers in the game absolutely and obviously when people look at the roster you're probably thinking you don't even think about okiku i feel like okiku is really really powerful and then speaking of uh, and just right into s tier honestly i yeah probably mm, yeah i guess i would put him here or here because i feel like oden is really powerful he has a mechanic where he um, it's almost impossible to miss the the few times you cannot have your swords quoted in like i feel like oden is a direct upgrade of shanks and obviously supposedly we're getting another shanks in the next character pack so we'll see how this works out um but i feel like oden which actually makes me want to put him like down here because oden is literally a direct upgrade and if i have i don't want to like feel make s feel too diluted but there are a lot of top tiers in this game and if Odin is a you know basically a better version of Shanks. Then I feel like I have to put him down here. Um, Odin is like insanely strong. He has obviously he coats with swords in hockey. He does like he has short range attacks, but he also launches like waves off of his swords, which with each slash. So he has extra range on top of that. A lot of his combo strings have like just insane like range and aoe like and damage especially like the third one where he launches like cr like cross waves and all that stuff he also has one where he does a large like dome where he if you go in it you're just getting slashed and then if your hot if your swords are hockey powered then it also launches like waves out of the dome so odin is literally like nuts and then his special attacks do insane damage the paradise totska the conqueror's hockey everything oden is extremely extremely powerful um i only have him below smoothie because i feel like smoothie just the range on our abilities are just insane for, especially for a uh, warriors game where you're fighting hordes like smoothie is like like in, like insane um you can argue that maybe oden's more powerful so maybe you could put him here but i feel like him and smoothie are probably interchangeable okay Moving on, Nami. Nami was interesting because I feel like low key, she's like down here. Like, I want to say she's like really bad. However, we're thinking about the whole character. And if you put the Zeus full force burst with her, I have her like at least here. Like, being real. Nami. Like without Zeus and just her base kit, she's like she's really bad. I, I don't like using her. But with Zeus and you know, if you learn how to, because she has a mechanic where she can, basically with one of the combo strings, the second one, you can basically make clouds on top of enemies, and then if you press you know triangle or whatever your unique button, then you can launch like you can hit them with lightning. Very cool, interesting stuff, right? It fits her character, but in her normal full force burst or like without it she's just really like it just doesn't do anything right and like i said we're talking about like all the modern like levels like level 24 if you think about like all the new skills and stuff obviously like it enhances all of these characters to like an upper level um so if you think about like those skills her like level 24 and her zeus full force burst she's at least i think even like up here i feel like i i like using that nami more than i like using these two like it she's actually insanely good if you don't believe me try it out yourself or see in the gameplay right now like nami is really good with that zeus full force burst and moving on we have mihawk i think mihawk is i think mihawk is probably better than shanks mm. which is funny i have them both right next to each other to be honest um i just feel like mihawk is a really cool character he has the black blade and his mechanic is or his unique mechanic is every combo string up to three he can basically charge up his sword which will end up charging up his combo strings which is why i think i might have him over shanks because i, I don't know i don't know i think i'll leave it like this i think i'll leave it like this uh, part of me is fighting it but shanks is literally looking at me like come on man but in a way you can argue that mihawk is probably stronger because when he go in his full force burst 
his combo string is actually way faster so to get those three charges or two charges and then the third one's the last one is much quicker um maybe that could be why i have him lower than shanks is that it takes like mihawk a little bit longer to like build up a little bit longer not that much um but it really does amp up his you know his triangle strings right so mihawk i think i would have him right below shanks i think shanks gets to full power a little bit quicker than mihawk but mihawk has really good air combos really good ground combos uh really strong specials um he's just an all-around really good character like there's nothing much else to say mihawk and he has green attacks green is my favorite color so you know there it is what it is there so yeah mihawk comfortably an a marco i for me i feel like he's like a good like b tier i think like i'll probably have him here marco's not a bad character at all i think he has pretty good air combos obviously because he's a sky type and he has wings and all that stuff I, I think i like his combos a lot i just think his specials i know they're more so for healing which is obviously a plus but speaking of oden which actually makes me i think i'll bump him up now that reminded me that oden also has a built-in like heal with his like taunt so yeah i think that bumps him up for sure but you know marco heals um, with, with his like one of his ultimates he has good damage he has good air combos i just feel like his ground com combos kind of lack a little bit and you know some of the stuff in the air like i think this is one where he just starts flying in his fool's like zone form it's it's cool looking but it doesn't do extreme amount of damage but yeah i feel like marco's like comfortably above mid he, but he's really good so like i think he's just comfortably like in b tier um actually i think i might bump him up just because you know I feel like that would make more sense. Like, he's almost an A, but not really. The Luffy's. Here we go. Okay. Uh, Pre-time skip Luffy, I think, is comfortably, like, mid. Like, he's, he's like, right here. Maybe, like, right here, actually. Um, the reason why I think he's mid is not that, like, I think he's bad. I think he does really good damage. Um, I just feel like when you're comparing him to the other Luffy's, especially on the tier list, I feel like um Lu or i guess when you look at him ha as himself as a character good damage but he has the gear three drawback and that like sets him back quite a lot obviously because it wastes time uh makes you vulnerable and it makes even his full for his burst like the gear second stuff uh, i feel like i guess i put him like bottom b tier low key i think i think he's still really strong because gear two is really powerful but when you go into gear two he has a giant jet shell and all that stuff and it's like it kind of makes you think like you're gonna go into gear two you use that special and then you get kicked out of it because you use your giant jet shell right so i feel like pre-time skip luffy's like yeah he's like b tier like bottom of b tier he's really good um but his gear three stuff really really just like tax him behind post time skip luffy is comfortably an a tier i think um i I guess we'll obviously kind of we'll talk about pre uh, post and then Onigashima Luffy because obviously we have a big controversy with their with their move sets and stuff like that. Um, so post time skip Luffy has a lot going for him. I feel like he has really powerful attacks. He obviously doesn't have the gear three drawback anymore. He has gear four bounce man and snake man. He's really really powerful. Honestly, he might even feel better than Shanks and Mihawk to be honest. Um, he's almost an S tier. Um, but the like reason I don't have him there is because I feel like I feel like his like attacks with like ba like bounce man and snake man are sometimes a little bit too hard to control at some points, and I feel like things go too too fast. But overall, his damage uh, is really good. But when you compare them to like like tech and stuff that they have up here, I feel like Luffy d doesn't have that. But he is really really powerful with Gear Four Bounce Man and snake man obviously added to his stuff obviously he also gets everything pre time skip luffy had so you know i could argue you could argue me and persuade me to put him in s for sure so the next one's a bit tricky i kind of want to put onigashima luffy in s like bottom of s almost a tier just because they're very similar and honestly obviously you get rid you get rid of the both gear fours that this one has so this one has a lot more like form changes and stuff going on but I feel like like when you compare gear four, like both of them to gear five stuff, gear five and like the power that Onigashima Luffy has, I feel like it's just much, much stronger than the gear fours, in my opinion. 
Um, and that probably makes me want to bump him up at least to S, like bottom of S, because Gear 5, if you haven't checked out the video or whatever, Gear 5 has a better mechanic than the Gear 4s because he has innately, without any skills, he has a mechanic where he can basically be immortal, or not immortal, uh, in infinite, right? So Gear 5, I believe if you get up to a combo level of 1000, uh, your meter, your full force burst meter, doesn't, like deplete so you can stay in gear five so it's like weird to think because it's like do i i, I primarily use like onigashima like onigashima luffy is literally like a skin right and then like 95 percent of each run that i play with this character it's in gear five because if you put on the new like worked up i believe or heat up one of them and you put full force burst enhancements maybe even resilient stuff like if you prioritize it over your full force burst you can basically just have gear 5 the entirety of the match just keep your combos up his combos have a lot of range a lot of damage um he can go giant his triangle is also pretty cool it has a, like a vacuum effect with the lightning it also expands in range when you hold it but then you also have his specials which are devastatingly strong and easy to get luffy has the lightning attack which does lightning strikes on the ground and then when you launch it it also has the impact and then an explosion so the lightning attack is on itself is really strong but then you have the bajran gun with extreme range and power and then you also have i think it's called this is my peak but it's the attack that he did in the movie film red and that attack is extremely powerful for luffy as well so i feel like gear 5's specials and, and everything are just like just heads and shoulders better than everything in gear 4 the only thing i can compare in gear 4 that's probably as good as this is probably the dragon culverin that gear 4 snake man has and maybe the leo rex bazooka but when you compare like the specials from both gear 4s and everything to this guy it's just no contest he also gets rock gatling and red rock which obviously rock gatling does good like armor break and can you know knock characters out of like their logia forms pretty quick and red rock does some good damage too so that's my argument for why I have this Luffy over this one, even though they're very similar and people complain about it. I just think Gear 5 is just that powerful in terms of, like, this character alone. So far, we, we're doing pretty good. I think we're almost about halfway there. All right, Luchi. Luchi, thing is comfortably, like, S tier. He's, like... I feel like I have more fun with the, with the, with the, with the siblings because uh, he has very powerful stuff it's just the, he's kind of wonky in the sense that he doesn't have a form change instead he has combos that change him into his own and that change him back to his normal it's like kind of funny kind of fun but kind of cool um but luchi does have a lot of cool stuff working for him uh he has a lot of cool powers with that um his rokuo gun and, and his special attacks are very powerful too his sky, you know, combos are also really good. I mean, it's just a little finicky because he wants to be in the sky, but I think when you're in the sky and you do your combo string with the triangle button, like square triangle, he goes from Zoan to human. And then when you're on the ground, I think he goes from human to Zoan. So it's, it's a bit it's a bit wonky, but he has a lot of versatility and a lot of like power. I think he's really good. Uh, Trafalgar Law. Um, Law is also like A tier. I feel like he has like, Obviously, he creates the room. If you press triangle, he makes a room that kind of like vacuums people into it. Um, he has a lot of damage in that room, a lot of different attacks. I think I'd probably put him like here. Uh, I feel like he also just does a lot of damage in those rooms. His full force burst, I think, makes him a little bit more um, like a little bit, gives him a little bit of invulnerability, a little bit. Like he has like extra defense or something. I feel, at least that's the way it feels. But Law, I feel like, he just has a lot of versatility with the room. And everything uh his special attacks are also pretty strong uh you know the one where he cuts the island in half the uh, you know the scalpel the gamma knife um everything like that i feel like and he also breaks guard pretty easily um i think yeah i think law is pretty good like right under mihawk is like for right now is pretty good kizaru s tier kizaru is uh i don't know i'll probably put him like here kizaru is interesting because Obviously, he gets the invulnerability when he becomes a Logia, so that's good. That's number one. He's a Sky type. He just had like he literally just zaps, like he just points and and just blows everything up. Kizaru is a really powerful character. Maybe people find him annoying because of his oh, to, to, like the way he talks, 
but I feel like most of his specials are also pretty good, like the the Yasaka, Yasakani no Magatama, and he also has the the, the yes, yeah, you know, the mirror technique as well. But his air combo, I think there's one specific where he does like three. He he teleports to three different areas, does three laser kicks, those explode, and then he does tr a triple kick to end it off. That ends with three laser explosions. He also has other ones where he la like lets out light pillars from the ground. Like Kizaru is while all of this while being invulnerable, by the way. So I think Kizaru is actually really, really top tier. He's really good. Um, so moving on to Kinemon. Kinemon's a character that's really cool. I feel like he's top of B tier. Um, you can even argue maybe A tier. Um, actually, yeah, you could probably I'm gonna put him right right here. Kinemon is a really fun character to me. I feel like people maybe sleep on him because obviously in a character pack like you know, where you have Oden and like even Okiku. Like, Kinemon is not as good as those two, but he has really cool and powerful techniques. The negatives that I think keep him from being S is that he doesn't have air combos, but he kind of supplements that with having a really cool, like, fire ability because the way he's a technique type, so the way his thing works is that every time you do a combo string, you let out these little fire pits. And those little fire pits basically act as a kind of like as a as a number like a charger. So what Kinemon does is that when you combo cancel by pressing square after like a triangle button, um, he like does like a little like fire vortex. So the more you have of those little fire like you know pits, the stronger that that fire tornado is gonna be. But then while you do that, and then you press triangle while the tornado is going on, it does an explosion and then rains fire. On top of that, Kinemon also has a lot of just fire abilities, so he's just like providing like burn damage too. Kinemon is really, really good. I feel like he's a very intricate character, and I feel like maybe people even sleep on him. But yeah, I think I'm gonna leave Kinemon right here. I was thinking about propping him up against like Reiju and stuff like that, but I think Kinemon has like, like he's like once you figure him out, he's really, really good, and you can argue him up here to be honest, like in the same like tier. But I just feel like he doesn't like have as much tech as maybe these three like sky like range sky combos and all that stuff but kinemon is very very good i would put him up here for sure next is killer uh killer's mid uh killer has really good power very good you know combos and everything but i feel like killer uh, the fact that he's a speed type swordsman character and he doesn't even have air combos it, it kind of blows but killer is okay though He's like comfortably, he does good damage, really good combos, really powerful triangle button, um, good specials, but yeah, I think no air combos and and him being kind of bare bones is very unfortunate for him. He, he's okay. He doesn't really have anything special to go for him. Uh, Kid. Okay, at first I thought Kid was like here, like to be honest. And honestly, I might even have him there, but I think... If you give Kid the benefit of the doubt and you learn to use his, you know, assembling ability and you properly skill, like put the proper skills on him, I believe there's a skill, I forget what it's called, but there's a skill that like uh, like stops you from getting knocked back so easily. You could probably argue he's like here. Uh, I think Kid is like mid, uh, funny enough, Captain Mid, right? I think he's like the bottom right here. Um, if, if, if you give him like the benefit of the doubt and he uses stuff properly, he's actually pretty strong. Um, my big negative with him is that is that he's just so e like the his power relies on him to gather stuff, but it takes long, like not like long and says like it takes forever. It just takes you know for when you're getting comboed by like fifty and uh, thousand enemies, right? Um, if you fight, like, if you're fighting the true Pyro Warrior stage and you're fighting, like, five, like, you're fighting Shanks, Sabo, Sengoku, they're all going to be knocking you back. So you're always getting your arms just broken. And that sucks because that is where Kid's basically all his damage come from. So honestly, like, Kid for me is right here. If I didn't, if I don't account for how good he is with the actual arms, he would be, like, here for sure. But with the arms and the fact that he does a repel... With the repel, that actually does a lot of damage too. When he shoots the like the metal outwards, it's like, you know, he's he's a lot better. Okay, my goat. On a personal bias, he's like up here. <laughs> um, I would probably if if I'm gonna be honest, I'll put him here, probably. 
Um, I just think Kata Curry is like, it, he's the definition of the easiest character to play, him and Whitebeard, because um, he has his full force burst that makes the Muso donuts. Um, and that on its own gives them insane damage because now you have instead of two hands, you have six hands just dealing damage like crazy. His combo strings are also really powerful. Honestly, I like even thinking about it, I, I kind of want to bump him up above Whitebeard, but I think Whitebeard is just so good. And like, I, I just have him above Oden because Katakuri, okay, Katakuri literally, I feel like if you're looking at all these characters, he it's going to sound weird even because I don't have him first. But he has the pinnacle of design. Like, he has very power. He's a speed type, number one. So when you go into his full force burst, your stamina is never running out. Number two, his combos with the with the Musou Donuts are insane. Destroy guard like butter. He's very powerful, too, because, again, it's like multiple hits from different... Like, it's insane. He does a lot of damage as well as chipping away guard damage. His specials are probably the only kind of negative I could give him because... The only special that I don't like is the Buzz Cut Mochi, which is unfortunate because that's its main thing. It does a lot of damage, I think, when he land it, but against giant characters or whatever, it's kind of hard to control because he just speeds forward. And if you don't get them, it's kind of, like, rough. So I just rely on using Conqueror's Hockey and the Mochi Anemone. Um, but aside from that, he has a special that heals him, like, back to full, the Donut, right? So he can heal... He also has an innate passive ability, I believe, where he has a chance to basically like dodge an enemy attack. He is very, very good. Like he, like, and that's not even that low. Like sometimes there's been times where like I'm trying to do a combo, but because I'm getting hit, I'll dodge like five attacks in a row, because that's you know his gimmick. Uh, he has good air combos too. He you know uses a spear in the air, and his triangle button, if you hold it, allows him to spawn a donut on other characters like other you know enemies and those donuts spawn punches so he also does more like damage and to be honest he also has another mechanic where he can wrap the enemy in mochi that does that one immobilizes them and also does damage so honestly honestly i think like real talk after saying all that i feel like katakuri just has too much too much in his kit that I'm personally putting him above Whitebeard. He is, I feel like, borderline perfect. The only negative I can give him, real talk, is the the Buzz Cut Mochi special. But like, he ha he like has everything else. Um, you can, again, I think you can argue or even say Whitebeard's damage is better, which I probably I definitely think I would agree with that. But I feel like Katakuri just does so much in, in his kit. But then you can argue like does. Like, does Whitebeard even need that, right? So, I don't know. So, that's... I feel like my number ones so far are these two just kind of interchangeable. So, I feel like they're right here, but it's not like... For these two, it's not in particular order. Um, okay, so moving on to speed Kaido. I feel like both Kaidos... we got to talk about both of them. People, I feel like, sleep. I'm going to put him top of A. People sleep on on hybrid kaido because it's saying he doesn't do as much damage as like you know power kaido and you can argue that for sure you can also argue that power kaido has that combo string the square square triangle where he just digs his horns into the ground and does massive range um but my only counter to that is that if you d build with proper skills and stuff this hybrid kaido has a lot going for him but I can see why, and I do agree, that Power Kaido just has more damage. Um, his Dragon Form is also broken. And if you want to go just, you know, his full force burst, this Kaido is just insanely strong. So, I think I think I would leave him here. Him, He's at top of A because he's a giant character. Um, you know, he's going to guard break. He's going to, um, you know, do all this stuff. So, I would probably leave him right here. He also does pretty good special like damage as well. So overall, he's just weaker than Power Kaido, but he's still a giant character. So he has the benefits of being a giant character, which is like all the, you know, the guard breaks and all that stuff. So I think I'll just leave him there. He could obviously you could argue him for above Luffy maybe, but I think Gear Five is just that dude, right? Judgey, judge, judge, my boy. 
at first I thought I liked him more than Reiju and and them, but I feel like they just have more stuff going on than Judge. Judge is pretty good though. I probably put him like right here next to Uroj. Judge is good. Um, I think his combos, his air combo stuff is good. His specials are good too. Um, I just feel like his, his actual combos and all that, like this is kind of just a personal thing. I feel like they make me dizzy. Like I feel like I'm just watching a wasp like fly around at max speed. Um, his damage is okay. He's pretty good too. But I think I, I feel like I prefer these guys and uh, Reiju above Judge personally. Jinbei is like, uh, unfortunately he's my guy, but I think he's like here to be honest. Um, he's either here or D, but Jinbei is just, I don't know, man. Like I, I don't feel satisfying playing with him. He has some pretty good specials. Um, it's hard to gauge like how much, like they do pretty good damage, but it's hard to gauge like how they hit because they kind of have this like air about them, right? But I think Jinbei is like, I don't know, he's like okay for me, slash really bad. Um, I just don't have a ton of fun using Jinbei. He's my guy in the anime, but I, I just don't, personally, don't have that much fun using him. He has some pretty good, um, like, you know, combos and stuff, but I just think he's, like, not that great. Um, Ivanko, I mean, hey, if you're a top skill Jinbei player or Tashigi player, let me know. Show me. Uh, Ivanko, I would, also, I would put, like, here. Maybe even here, but I think using Ivankov is pretty interesting because he's very good. I feel like he has like a lot of range, a lot of like wonkiness, the big head stuff. He has a mechanic where, you know, he injects his head, makes it bigger to make the hell wink a little bit stronger. Um, but like, it just feels like it, it doesn't like, I feel like the hitbox with the hell wink and all that stuff is kind of wonky. Cause it feels like I'm right there, like right in front of the enemy, but it feels like I don't, like I, it doesn't hit, even though it might hit. It's like weird, but Ivankov is good. Uh, like just or like you know, I, I think Ivankov is okay, but I just feel like those things, the uh, specials are, are pretty good too. But I don't know. I feel like Ivankov is just not that great, but they're they're at least eccentric and pretty fun to play. So they're a little bit below mid, kind of like with Sabo. Just you know, they're okay, have some stuff, but not 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 that like balanced to be honest uh fuji toro is probably like mid too um he at least has air combos i'll probably put him on top of c maybe uh he has air combos uh he has very good specials and stuff like that um his triangle with the meteor the meteors do good damage too i just feel like the meteor stuff just takes too long um like to charge at least the triangle button but I don't know, I feel like he's slow too, but he has he has some pretty decent stuff. He has a gravity sword and all that stuff. His specials are really good. Um, but overall, I think he's just, a, he's just a good character. Like, when you compare him to, like, Kizaru, or, like, how much, like, range and stuff to the characters, like, I, I just feel like he's, like, kind of, like, down here. Uh, Frankie. Uh, Frankie was also pretty, pretty good. He's, like, pretty mid. Um, the general Frankie stuff is cool. I think he does good damage. Um, I also think he launches a lot. Like, again, like I said, all of them do pretty okay damage. It's only the ones down here that I'm kind of finicky about. But Frankie also has, like, his combo strings. They do a lot of, you know, they basically, like, launch a lot of, like, attacks, like, missiles and stuff. I should put them here. Um, launches a lot of missiles. Has a lot of range to it. He has, like, the laser beam and all that stuff. So... Like, the more I talk about him, the more I, like, I actually do like Frankie. So, I actually might put him, like, up here. Frankie does have a lot of, like, pretty cool stuff with his combos. Uh, he doesn't have air combos, unfortunately. But I just do think Frankie has a lot of stuff going for him. He's, he's a pretty good character. X Drake. Drake is, like, really good. Like, really good. I kind of want to put him in S. Like, Drake is, like, really, really top tier. Especially, you know what he go? You know why he goes in S? I'm, I'm putting him right here because he he is a T Rex that can air dash cancel. That immediately puts him into S. Memes aside, I do think uh, Drake is actually really good. His base combos like are really good. He has also really good uh, specials. Um, one of them he could do in the sky. Uh, he also has uh, you know sky combos and stuff like that. So I think he's really good. His T Rex form does a lot of damage. Has a lot of range has combo strings to it it is just kind of funny when you think about that but the t-rex form is really really powerful 
Uh, Dolph Flamingo. Dolphy, Dolphy, Dolphy. I feel like Dolphy's really good. I'm going to put him right here, I think. Maybe, yeah, I think right here. Because I don't, I, I feel like he's really good. Has a lot of techniques. The Parasite, being able to paralyze people is actually really strong. But I feel like the thing with his Parasite, you can basically only rely on one combo string when it comes to doing a bunch of damage, at least in my opinion, which is the Sky combo. I think is a fourth combo, like square four square times. Um, four squares and then triangle where you parasite and if you have like basically uh let's say you grab a boss which you'll see i think in the video in the footage when you grab a boss he is able to like and w combine that with a horde and when they're hitting each other it like melts their health bar melts their health bar he's actually that move is like i think his strongest ability bar none um he can't use a lot of special in the sky, which kind of bums me out because obviously he's a sky type. Um, like he can't use the birdcage. He can't use the 16 holy bullets. I can't, like he can't use either, which is funny because I think he like, literally, didn't he use that in the sky for to counter, you know, King Kong gun. But, um, but I thought, I don't think he could use that in the sky either, which it blows. Um, over he is the only one he could use and that one's kind of mid, like it's okay. But I don't know, I feel like Dofi is almost an S tier, but I just feel like there are some things holding him back being a Sky type. Very, very much like um, like Sanji, at least in my opinion. So next is Crocodile. I think Crocodile is probably like... I think Crocodile is probably like top of B tier, maybe. Like he's really good, has a lot going for him. He has very good like uh, attacks. He could do specials in the sky, at least one of them. Because the other ones he has to touch the ground. But, you know, he has very powerful tornado attacks. Um, does a lot of damage. Um, and I think he's just very well... Like, he's a Logia type as, as well, so he gets invulnerability. Um, so I do think, like, Crocodile is actually a pretty good character. Uh, Cracker. I think Cracker is, like top tier for me um i think cracker has a lot going a lot of good damage he summons the biscuit soldiers um he does a lot of stuff actually which makes me want to keep like put him like right here right next to his sister um i i think he's a little bit more technical oriented because you need to plan around and do you know summon your your biscuit soldiers and stuff like that but overall though like i think cracker has a lot going for him he has a lot of range with his attacks a lot of stuff with the biscuit soldiers and overall i think it like he's just a very good character like he has like no weakness he can also become invulnerable which is nuts by going into the biscuit soldier and you can attack in that and dude you can just spam square i think they're i, I, I don't know if they patched it they might have already but i think there was a way to be in the biscuit soldier for like ever but yeah, I, I do think it's um he's a really top tier character. Definitely belongs in S. All right, and we're down to the final row. Okay, so I think we're gonna have our first F tier. Look, as you saw in the video, I think Chopper, like, I think Chopper has good special damage. Like we're g give him his props where it's due. Um, I just I can't for the life of me. He has no air combos uh his special he can't transform into beast the giant form which it blows which is stupid right um because it's like you know kind of like with carrot but carrot is way better um and the, the uh, i think the biggest thing for me is that he has no range at all like his i know he has a scan ability but i just don't like using chopper i think he can be good obviously in anyone's hands obviously you know this is just my personal tier list but chopper just sucks to me man like he he can he can be at any stage sure um but the fact that you have to get so close to every single enemy because he has he just has no range with like a sword or shock waves or anything like he has a kung fu point right and that does something but it's okay it doesn't I'm like it doesn't like he doesn't do much um but then you also have the scope which is supposed to like add extra damage but i feel like it like almost borderline non-existent because he's just so mid um but yeah i think i think chopper for me is like f tier 
Uh, Cavendish, I will definitely put in A tier, I think. I think Cavendish has a lot going for him. Uh, has a lot of uh, sword attacks, a lot of range. Uh, the Hakuba form is very powerful, very fast, destroys guard. The specials also have giant AoE like range and stuff. So I would put like Hakuba and, and, and Cavendish in here. All right, Parrot, uh, everybody's favorite bunny. I think she's mid. Hmm, huh. I think she's mid. Like she has going for her the uh, like the the thing is like uh, yeah I do think she's mid she low key could be in D tier I'm putting smack dab in the middle of C tier though or at least like right actually right here because carrot has good combos and stuff but the thing that really carries her kit is the electricity the fact that she can paralyze that that, that does make her very strong but her specials are kind of okay her combos are they don't have the greatest range and. The biggest thing is obviously that her Sulong form specials are really cool and really have a lot of range and stuff, but um, I just feel like why couldn't we just transform into Sulong and, and do all those stuff manually, but um, I just feel like, you know, Carrot's okay, at least for me. She has good range, but I, I don't know. She's, she doesn't have too much, at least for me, um, but I guess if I'm going to be objective, I guess I'll probably, you know, prop her up to like the middle. Or so because that that immo like immobilization is actually really powerful. Buggy, I'm a, I'm gonna be real. Buggy's like, I'm like I'm gonna be real. He's like E tier for me. Like, I like I I see his invulnerability. He can also transform into a car. You know, you know. I'll put him here then. Um, he can transform into a car and all that stuff. And I just feel like. His combos, his specials, they're, they just, I don't know, they just don't do it for me. I don't see a lot of, like, craziness from Buggy. Um, I know he gets, like, an invulnerability, I believe, when he turns into that car and all that, but you can't really control it. It just goes, like, in a straight line. But, no, overall, I think I think Buggy's okay. Um, a little bit below. Obviously, we'll update the tier list, you know, the more, with the more characters coming out. Maybe I'll change my mind in the next one, but I think, as of right now, I'll keep him in D tier um definitely fun he's he, he still has that fun factor because he's so quirky and weird right uh brook i think brook's like b tier brook has some pretty cool stuff has the soul solid has a mini ice age compared to like kuzan um but he's really he's really solid no pun intended he also has a move where he can knock enemies out by turning into a soul so maybe you can even make that like as your build potentially um but yeah, it's I, I think Brooke is, is pretty solid. I think he's pretty good. Then we have Hancock. I think Hancock is like right here. Because she doesn't have air combo, she has a dive kick. But she's actually really strong in terms of like her like again her paralysis. The fact that she can turn people to stone, her full force burst, her activation of it turns people into stone with the you know, just turning it on. So Obviously, turning people to stone is a very big thing because that makes the enemy immobilized. Very similar to Yamato and Kiku's ice. But I think, obviously, Yamato and Okiku have much more going on than, than Hancock. Um, I just wish she had more, like, you know, actual air combos and, and more, like, stuff. But I think if you're, if I'm going to rank her objectively, I think she is actually pretty strong. Um, especially if you work around her petrifying stuff. So I think she's really good. Uh, the Zehahaha man himself, I think he definitely goes up here. I think he guard comfortably goes like right here, maybe. He's weird. He he's like not that his combos are bad because I actually have a good round of range and stuff, but he the main way you want to play him is you want to use him like you want to use the darkness stuff combined with the tremor stuff, which obviously is like a no brainer. But you want to suck people into the void. And with black hole and all that and then use their ultimate because i feel like more often than not unless the enemy has a stupid amount of health if you build them right he can pretty much one shot a lot of enemies with that with like sucking up people like that his combos also have some pretty decent range and destruct like destruction to him but yeah i'll probably put him like here um but i think yeah actually i'll put him like here because i think he's probably maybe better than some of these characters but i feel like th these characters are just better than him Big Mom, I feel like Big Mom is like definitely A tier. Um, giant character, 
obviously has stuff for Napoleon, has a lot of fire stuff, does a lot of damage with a, like the fire combo string, but um, I just feel like her damage compared to like, you know, Power Kaido, the other giants and Whitebeard and stuff like that, she does have her like starvation form. So that is a, a big thing for sure. But I think Big Mom prop, like properly sits like right here. Um, I think her base form is just, she's also not as fast, but then to compensate for that, she doesn't have that much range compared to like someone like Kaido. But yeah, Bej F tier, below Chopper. Chopper, I said it was awful. Bej is like, oh my God. He is the least fun I've ever had playing this game. I feel like he's quirky. He's interesting. He could summon people out. I'm gonna give him his props. It has a pretty cool like visualization, but I just don't have fun using him. He just sucks. Like, like plain and simple. The damage, the startup for all like the him shooting and all that stuff. I just feel like it's not it's not fun for me, uh, at least personally. Like yeah, I just I'm just gonna move on now because we're it's a long video. Uh, if you if you if you made it this far, which is probably near the end, uh, make sure you leave a like and let me know if you have by commenting. I don't know, Beige sucks. Comment that and I'll let you, I'll know that you made it this far. Um, here we go. So Hawkins Hawkins is like really cool. I like him. I think, like, I think I'll, I'll probably leave him below Brooke because Brooke has, like, more stuff, I think. But, actually, no, I'll probably put him above. He doesn't have air combos, which sucks, but, like, compared to Killer, Hawkins just has cool stuff, though. He has a cool gimmick where he can basically fortune tell people, and he has a percentage chance to drop, like, either a meteor, um, a box, a uh, ice stone, like, you know, a, a piece of ice, uh, or stuff like that. I think... Hawkins is a really interesting character and it's not hard to do that stuff um, With him he can also turn into the straw man thing and attack people So I think Hawkins is actually a really cool character Barto uh, I'm gonna be honest. I, I don't really care for Barto um, He's not as bad as these two um, But the whole gimmick with making people annoyed like I don't I don't really see the purpose in that too much um I think his barrier stuff is cool. Um, I think he has some powerful special attacks. I know he has a special that can literally drop a brick from the sky and that breaks anyone's guard. Cool, but I don't think it it's enough for me to put him up higher. I just think he's kind of like, he's like, eh. I really don't really care for Bartzel that way. All right, and honestly, the last three, I guess we'll try and speed it up. Uh, Kuzan. I think Kuzan comfortably is like in, like right here. I feel like he has a lot of cool stuff, a lot of range, a lot of ice attacks. He's very similar. To, he's like a combination for me for Akainu and Crocodile, where he has like tornadoes, but he has like ice tornadoes. Um, he also has like the ground ice age, very similar to Akainu's ground magma. Um, but I feel like he's just a, a bit less than like, like in terms of just pure power than like Akainu potentially. But I feel like Aokiji, has just a lot of good stuff going for him you could probably argue even like here because it's easier to do his stuff than you know not that it's hard to do these two like their stuff but you know i feel like his ice and all that stuff is just easy he also shoots ice out like it's uh like projectiles and stuff so i think that's pretty cool but i think i'll probably keep him down here like proper i think he's really 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 good um my main man, Akainu. Akainu is like, I want to say like here. Um, he may be, I mean, honestly, you could probably just put like these, the top five right here. These are the top five best characters in the game, in my opinion. Obviously, like anything afterwards is like, you know, better. But like the top five, they could be, for me, they could be interchangeable as number one. Like I made a big statement for Akata Curry, but... Akainu is like magma and how much range that has, how much damage he does with the like magma hand. He does a lot, a lot of damage. He is very, very, very powerful. Um, he is insane. The only negative is that I hate that he's the only one of the three admirals that doesn't have his time skip version, bro. Burning Blood came out in 2016 and they have a film gold version of him with the white suit. Like, come on, bro. Like, get it together. And lastly, Ace. I feel like Ace is like definitely top tier. Ace is like the antith like antithesis of of Sabo. I probably put him like here. Ace is very powerful. 
He has a lot of like good AOE. He has a lot. He could turn invulnerable with the Logia form. He has Conqueror's Hockey. Um, his ultimates have a lot of range too. I think Ace is just a very, very powerful character. His air combos are also really, really, really good. So I think Ace comfortably sits in S tier. And with that, that is it for my tier list. Very long video. Um, let me know what you all think. I know it was, it was a long video because there's a lot of characters to think about and like what they do and trying to go in depth without rushing through it. Hopefully it was as informative um, as for you as it was for me. Um, because this was a very big journey to like use every single character. It was very interesting. Um, but yeah, so I think my top five, like if I were to make a god tier, I think my top five were like, if I were to do like something like this, where it's like, um, like top five. If I were to do that, I'd put these guys right here. Like, that's how, <clears throat> if I want to like weed out like S rank, I think this will be pretty much like how I would like section it out. So yeah, let me know what you all think about my tier list in the comment section down below. How would you change it? Who would you bump up? Who's your favorite character to use? Is your favorite character one of the low tiers that I have personally? Um, if there is, like explain to me why. Uh, tell me why you think those characters are like your favorite and explain and maybe I'll give them a shout of different builds with different skills. Um, but yeah, so this is all up to date. Um, we'll obviously update this once the next batch of characters come out. Um, with all that being said, hope you enjoyed. And you know, leave a like, comment down below, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you all on the next one. Remember, I stream Tuesdays and Saturdays, so if you want to catch me live and hang out and chill, I'll be then live then. So with all that being said, peace out, everyone. Hope you enjoyed.